Hi friends, today I'm going to make a video about how to do a PhD in Japan. And the interesting thing about the Japan PhD possibility is that in many cases this PhD can be done in a period of three years without taking any coursework. So this is a huge attraction as far as the PhD is concerned because as many of you may know the PhD can take five to eight years in many places around the world. So here there is an opportunity for you to do a PhD in a highly developed country in a period of three years. So let's start with some of the things which have been happening in Japan over the last couple of decades. And you will see that several Japanese researchers have got the Nobel Prize. A large number of top quality papers are published from Japan and many of the Japanese universities are ranked among the good universities around the world. So, for example, you have University of Tokyo, you have Kyoto University, Nagoya University, Tokyo Institute of Technology, Tohoku University, Waseda University, Shinzo University, and so on. So, actually, there are a very large number of universities in Japan which give you graduate school possibility. There are more than six hundred universities with graduate schools. So now let's look at what are the things you need to do to get this PhD program. So the first thing you should do is try to lay the groundwork first. And essentially the groundwork means you need to finish a bachelor's degree and also finish a master's degree because the master's degree will greatly help you in not taking the coursework requirement. If your master's degree is in the same field or in the same narrow research topic as your PhD, then what's going to happen is that a lot of your coursework requirements are going to be completed in your master's degree program and you can do the PhD in three years by only doing research. So what you need to do is that you need to start laying the groundwork during your master's degree phase. So essentially you need to delve deep into your research problem and figure out who are the Japanese professors who are working in that field. So for example, you can go to Google Scholar, you can type in the name of your research problem and also Japan as the keyword. And then you are going to find the papers which were published in Japan in your area. So again, literature survey done during your master's problem phase is going to help you in figuring out which are the top universities or the key professors who are doing research in your field in Japan. So this will help you zoom into the professor. Because what happens in Japan is that the labs are very professor centric. For example, you have labs named the Taguchi lab or the Suzuki lab and so on. And therefore, the professor plays a very big role in the recruitment process for PhDs. Now, you can send off an email to this professor saying that you are interested in their research, you are doing research in a similar field and you would like to contribute to their research lab. Now, in this case, you may receive some response from this professor if he finds your work to be suitable for his lab. And in that case, you can start the conversation going. Now, if the professor is positive about your resume, then what happens next is that he will tell you to apply to the university for admission and scholarship. Now, most Japanese universities will have a web page which is there in the English language and you can go to this web page, you can find the application form for students and you can apply through this application form. Now, what's typically required during this application process? You need the transcript of your master's degree, you need any papers you have, any letters of recommendation, CV, letter about your research plan, and some future plans for your research. Now, beside this, some university may also require you to show the proficiency in the English language. So you can show it using IELTS or TOEFL, or there is one more test which you can give. It is called TOEIC. So this test is also good for somebody trying to showcase their English language skills in a workplace setting. Now. Remember, the Japanese are not trying to judge you at the level of the GRE verbal skills where you need to know words such as tergiversate or 
splenetic and so on. This is a much more normal level of English which is actually spoken by regular people. So once you have prepared all this application for the scholarship, you then send it through the web page and then you wait for some time to get the results. Now, one of the things which is very important in the Japanese PhD admission system is an interview and this is an interview which is often held by the professor and some of his colleagues in the department. So during this time they are going to ask you various questions about your background, about your master's research problem and so on and they are going to test out your research capabilities. So through this interview process they are going to figure out as to what you are going to be able to do when you join the lab and this interview is typically conducted in Skype or it may be in Zoom or Team or one of the online video formats. Now one of the things which will boost your possibility in getting a postdoc in Japan is if you have got some practical experience also. So if you have worked for a year or so or you have worked as an intern somewhere, done some more projects that does show that you are a person who has a lot of motivation and drive and a need for improving themselves and also if you have published some papers because that clearly shows that you have a very high degree of communication skill. Remember the Japanese professor is seeking somebody who is well versed in the English language and well versed in science and technology domains so that they can essentially put this guy to work straight away and the guy can generate some papers for his or her research lab. Now, one of the very important things here is to apply for the PhD, which is in the same line as your master's degree, because like I mentioned before, the three year PhD is without coursework and this will be possible for you if your coursework in your master's program is very similar or prepares you for the PhD program. So make sure this is the case, because if you want to make a change from your master's program to the PhD program then you may have to go for the five year PhD with coursework and that will take more time for you and also not all universities in Japan have courses in the English language so that can be a problem in some cases. Now as far as the research atmosphere in Japan is concerned it is all going to be in the English language but do remember that to be a part of the lab, to be a part of the Japanese society, you may need to know some element of Japanese or at least understand some element of Japanese. So people are fine if you do not speak Japanese, but very often they will have their own conversations in Japanese and if you can follow some of it, then you can continue to speak in your own language and then they can essentially figure out what you are up to. So essentially, as far as Japan is concerned, Japanese language will help you in getting into the system. Now, one of the things to remember in Japan is that the professors typically work very hard and so the culture is very traditional. You are expected to come to the lab before the professor comes. So if the professor comes at 9 a.m. then should be there by 8.30 a.m. and also try to leave after the professor leaves. So if the professor leaves at 6 p.m. try to leave at 6.30 p.m. Also meet with your professor regularly and be respectful. If you are called for anything such as a need to visit some place or go to some party at his home or something like that, then it's expected that you take part in these things. So again, Japan is a culture which is very much based on consent and on people essentially following commands from the top. So you need to keep that in mind, especially if you are coming from a country which has a more egalitarian mindset. So that's something to keep in mind before you go to Japan is that it's a top-down culture and so generally whatever the professor says you have to implement and do. Of course you can question but you need to question in a respectful manner. So it's not a very open society like the US where you essentially may call your professor by his first name. So it's very much expected that you call the professor professor Taguchi or Professor Toyota or whatever his name may be, do not call them by their first name. That's not the typical culture in Japan. So this was my take on some aspects about the PhD in Japan. I hope you benefit from this video. You will be able to do a PhD in three years if you try Japan out and remember 
Japan has a declining population and they have a large number of universities which need PhD students so this may be a great fit for you and you may be able to do a PhD quickly and then move on to the industry to postdoc somewhere else or in Japan and then to a faculty position or to corporate research at large. So I'll end this video here and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.